Hello viewers and welcome to yet another commentated match of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. My name is Mitch and I am the Hive Tyrant. Today I'm pleased to present you with yet another preview video of some of our upcoming Planetfall Cycle Warlords. In this match we've got Guy Lev making a return appearance with our upcoming Tyranid Warlord, Subject Omega X 62113. He's going to be playing against Brian Kupchak who is instead piloting Commander Starblaze. So Commander Starblaze's gimmick is being able to include common Astra Militarum cards in his deck, but no other cards from a non-Tau faction. He's also got a reaction where after you commit him to a planet, you can move an AM unit you control from an adjacent planet to his planet. Uh, note that our chosen synapse unit here is the Blazing Zoanthrope, and this works relatively well with uh, Subject Omega here, at least in theory, because Subject Omega is going to want to be infesting a lot of planets, and the Blazing Zoanthrope, if it's sent to an infested planet, uh, deals two damage at the onset of the combat round. I believe both of our players have decided to take mulligans. The initiative token is going to be in Guy's hand. We see a copy of the one cost, one command, Termagant Sentry put out to planet number four, and an Earthcast Technician for Brian out to planet number five, which is digging for an attachment. In assessing both of our players' opening hands, looks as though we've got a, a Virulent Spore Sax, which is going to be a combat action. You deal one damage to all of the enemy army units at that planet for sacrificing your units, and you also put into play an Infestation Token. We've also got Scything Hormigons, which generate an Infestation Token for free, and we've got myriad other effects in this deck that put those tokens into play. And why would you want those tokens? Well, Subject Omega X has the ability where each Gene Stealer card in hand may be deployed to infested planets as if it had ambush. Uh, so you can basically deploy an attachment, you can deploy a Gene Stealer unit uh, during the combat round, so long as you're at an infested planet, though your Warlord need not be there. We see the Virulent Sporsax put out to planet number three, and uh, yet another proxy we're using this in this video. We've got a Gene Stealer Prowler, which I took out of a card fan and photoshopped. It's basically just a 2-2 two -two for one, but if it's got Ambush, it's more powerful. At least it's more uh, valuable than an Eager Recruit in regard to stats uh, for price. And we see a copy of the Scything Hormigons go to planet number one after a Rattling Deadeye for our Tau player to planet number four. Four. Something very cool for Subject Omega, uh, one of the more powerful cards in the game, if I don't say so myself, is going to be his signature event here, Gene Implantation. For a single resource, whenever a Gene Stealer unit you control destroys an enemy army unit via an attack, so whether it's Subject Omega himself, or a Gene Stealer Prowler here, or a Yumgarl Gene Stealer, whatever it happens to be, uh, you can put that unit, so long as it's printed cost 3 or lower, uh, back into play under your control of that planet, ready available to attack uh, instead of just having it outright be destroyed. And in assessing Brian's hand, we've got a few different things. First off, we see his signature army unit, the Ardent Auxiliaries, played out to planet number three. Normally, they're a bit better played further up the board just because uh, once they enter your Warlord's HQ, if they're commit alongside your Warlord to a planet that has an Imperial Guard unit, uh, you can basically ready them. And because you can trigger reactions in whatever order you would like, uh, for instance, you could send command under Starblaze to planet number three. You could use his reaction to pull a Rattling Deadeye over, and then you could trigger the Ardent Auxiliary's reaction in order to ready them. But it looks as though both of our players are deciding where exactly they'd like to send their Warlords. We see a Rattling Deadeye here at planet number four, now with an affixed Ion Rifle, which is going to be incredibly powerful, potentially attacking for four. During the range skirmish round, looks as though we see our Commander Starblaze go to planet number four. He may have been hoping to try to pin down subject Omega there, uh, but you know, it kind of would have been a crap place for Subject Omega to go. 
and instead he goes to planet number two. But very interestingly, we see the blazing zoanthrope. So note that planet number four is not infested. It's only going to be one point of damage that the blazing zoanthrope can do at the onset of the combat round to the rattling deadeye. Uh, but because that rattling deadeye gets to attack during the ranged skirmish round, it could potentially kill the blazing zoanthrope in a single shot uh, unless we see this gene implantation discarded as shields. And even if we don't, or even if we do, the Rattling Deadeye would deal three and then Starblaze would deal two. So it looks as though that Synapse unit is going to be destroyed. Uh, the first planet, Ossus 4, is going to be captured entirely uncontested by Guy. That's going to be one green strong point icon for him and he gets to steal one resource from Brian. During our command phase, looks as though we saw a grand total of, uh, if I could just scroll up here, two cards and two resources for Brian, zero cards, three resources for Guy. We're also going to see a battle at planet number two. Very interestingly, we actually see uh, Yavarn trigger, and it seems that we actually forgot a an effect here. At the onset of the combat round, uh, we see the Blazing Zoanthrope, of course, use its reaction to deal one point of damage out to the Rattling Deadeye, but we see a, a freshly drawn copy of the Hostile Environment gear discarded as shields. Here's yet another reason that we wanted to see a lot of infestation tokens in the Gene Stealer's deck, or perhaps he's simply playing it uh, because he has a lot of infestation type mechanics. We see the Shrieking Harpy. It's a 2-5 flyer with 2 command. It's got the combat reaction where when it's declared as an attacker at an infested planet, uh, you exhaust each enemy non-elite army and token at that planet. So incredibly powerful, but it's going to be showing up uh, during our following round exhausted for the initial round of combat. Something very interesting is that we also see our opponent put into play his only army unit in hand, which happened to be a 4-cost assault Valkyrie. I can only imagine that uh, uh, guy was assuming his opponent would have nowhere near a unit of this value in hand, but it's a 4-4 flying unit, so when it's being attacked by uh, any non-flying unit, it only takes half damage prior to the opportunity to shield, uh, but if we can set the Shrieking Harpy up at a planet where there's an infestation token, that's still not going to stop well, it's the Assault Valkyrie is still not going to be able to resist the Shrieking Harpy's ability here. So it looks as though Glaive Guy does give out a sigh as he accepts defeat. The Rattling Deadeye conveniently kills off the Blazing Zoanthrope, and that is going to be a round one Synapse unit gone. So that is a very devastating blow to our Tyranid player. That's going to be a large amount of damage, uh, basically entirely negated. The flexible command icon each and every round is going to be, well, it would have been just crucial, and now Commander Starblaze is free to mop up at this planet, and that's going to be the Termagant Sentry here destroyed. So we could potentially see the game one as early as our current planet number four if one player sweeps blue technology icons. Otherwise, if uh, Hoop Jones just keeps going for uh, like, well, let's say if, if Glaive Guy keeps going for his green strongpoint icons, he's not going to be able to win until our current planet number five. So Aatrox Prime, when that battle is done, all said and done, it's going to fire into the HQ of Subject Omega, and that's going to be one point of damage to each of those units. So that 2-5 flyer took a point of damage. We see the Scything Hormigons take a point of damage, and uh, Subject Omega as well. So we're going to see the beginning of a new turn here. The initiative token goes to Hoop Joe and uh, both card, uh, both players draw two cards. They generate four additional resources for themselves. We see a Sanction Psyker and the Talarn Raiders for our Tau player. It's going to be his opportunity to take a deploy turn. And we see the signature uh, event, which we had from last turn, very powerful. Two cost, Bond of Brotherhood. So until the end of the phase, you pick a planet. Every Tau unit there gets plus two HP. Each AM unit you have at that planet gets plus two attack. So Rattling Deadeye would be attacking for six. Uh, something like the Ardent Auxiliaries would be a 2-4. The Assault Valkyrie would be a 6-4 flyer. And of course, Commander Starblaze himself gets plus two HP. So an incredible effect. Tau units are normally relatively fragile. It shores up their 
Uh, low HP values and AM units are typically high in number, similarly low in HP, uh, but you've got stuff like Iron Guard Recruits, Sanction Psyker, where that plus two attack can be absolutely just incredible. But Talarn Raiders go to planet number one, Yavarn. Again, its battle ability isn't something you commonly see triggered, uh, but it is a tri-icon planet. We see a Toxic Venom Throat put out to planet number four to trump the Earthcast Technician. Uh, so what's very interesting about that is it's yet another way for our Tyranid player to potentially infest a planet. Our new planet number five, by the way, is going to be Iridial. So, uh, in assessing our Tyranid player's hand, he's got a copy of Spore Burst, which is a two-shield icon card, but once we do happen to see Infestation tokens entering play, uh, we could potentially see an up to three printed cost Tyranid unit return to play from the discard pile for only two resources. Uh, at a target-infested planet, maybe something along the lines of a 3-3 Volatile Pyrovore, which deals out damage upon being destroyed. But let's see how Subject Omega can try to salvage the game for himself. At the present moment, he doesn't actually have any means of generating infestation tokens at all, which means the Gene Stealer Prowler is not the best card played from hand. It doesn't have any command icon. Well, it doesn't have any command icons. Uh, it He doesn't even have the initiative token. Both of these units are going to be showing up exhausted wherever it is the subject Omega goes and what really kind of stinks is that our AM player is starting to distribute a lot of pretty dangerous units out on the board so wherever subject Omega ends up going uh, he's bound to take at least some damage uh, in the process of you know showing up and waiting until the end of that first combat round and uh, because our Tyranid player isn't doesn't have a very threatening presence right now Commander Starblaze is going to be able to nicely set himself up wherever this Assault Valkyrie uh, would like to be. Uh, so I would assume that the Assault Valkyrie will be sent no further down than planet number three, Aatrox Prime, uh, just because that's the victory condition there. I could, uh, I guess I don't really see Commander Starblaze going to planet number two. He could go to, I suppose, planet number four would make some good sense. That'll give him a little bit of leeway to abandon one of these early planets, and I think it's going to be very difficult for Subject Omega to figure out where he wants to go. I think it would definitely make sense for Subject Omega to go to Planum so that he could uh, potentially set himself up at a green strong point planet, but at the same time, he's not going to be able to get the you know, the point, uh, the green strong point icon from Yavarn. So I think it's it's definitely going to be a pretty tricky choice here for our Tyranid. And uh, definitely the command phase is looking to favor our Tau player. But let's see where exactly both players opt to send their Warlords. All right, it looks as though Guy has chosen, looks as though both of our players have chosen. It's going to be planet number four for Starblaze, and it's going to be planet number two for Subject Omega. So I suppose I'm not tremendously surprised. Uh, I didn't think about this from Commander Starblaze's perspective, but Planum was a very, uh, you know, a petitive target for him as well because he'll be able to relocate the assault valkyrie at will note that if subject omega would have gone to planet number four starblaze could have reeled the rattling deadeye from planet number three to planet number four but that's going to be two cards for both of our players uh, but the big difference here is it's going to be three resources for brian he gets a copy of the iron guard recruits and a hostile environment gear and let's see for glaive guy he got a spore chimney which is going to be an hq phase only uh, point and click infest target planets and let's see how exactly this works so the assault valkyrie shows up of course exhausted yavarn is going to be captured it looks as though we're not seeing its ability activated so the zero two talarn raiders is going to capture planet number one entirely uncontested but now we're going to see a battle erupt at elwith our current planet number two What's interesting about this planet is, uh, of course, there's no way for Guy to know it, but his opponent only has three one-shield icon cards. He's only going to be able to attack for two in regard to potentially killing off the Ardent Auxiliaries in one attack prior to their opportunity to swing. Uh, it's a bit of a shame that the Virulent Spore Sacks aren't really going to be doing much at this planet. It's probably not the best idea to uh, sacrifice those to destroy them if... Um, 
you don't need to, but Subject Omega, I think, is unlikely to be able to kill off the auxiliaries himself. So let's see if we see another shield icon card used. And then I suppose I wouldn't be tremendously surprised to see the virulent spore sacks sacrificed if the auxiliaries survive. But looks as though Brian does allow them to die, and now the sanctioned psyker is going to have the opportunity uh, to retreat at the end of the round. And that's going to be uh, allowing for uh, Guy to have the opportunity to tutor the top three cards of his deck for any one card that he would like. Commander Starblaze is almost certainly going to be able to kill off this uh, Toxic Venomthrope. Granted, we could see it preserved, but I definitely don't think it's going to be worth saving. And uh, that's going to allow Planum to relocate the Assault Valkyrie pretty much wherever he would like. Very interestingly, we actually see those virulent spore sacks destroyed, and I feel as though that was going to be a mistake. All Well, okay, so I misspoke. This is not the first planet, so that means that uh, upon, you know, it's not going to be captured, it's not going to leave play. So we could see that spore burst uh, being used to return the virulent spore sacks or uh, the termagant sentry to play. But I just, I guess I don't know. The Shrieking Harpy is now nicely set up at that planet where Subject Omega has initiative. Uh, so it's basically going to all but guarantee that our Tyranid player is going to be able to win at that planet during the following turn. But that's really only going to mean that he gets a blue technology icon for his opponent. We could see... Uh, we could see Commander Starblaze just go to planet number two and planet number three and win a couple technology icons there, so I'm not exactly sure if if that's going to make enough of a difference for our Tyranid player. It's definitely going to let him set himself up at additional planets without having to worry about the first planet, but uh, let's see how everything breaks down. Looks as though Guy is back after a bit of a brief AFK, and uh, we've seen combat here at planet number two, and we've still got to see uh, combat here at Planum. So Glaive Guy is presently searching the top three cards of his deck, and what exactly uh, would he want to see? Guy currently has seven resources, five cards, relative to Brian's six resources and four cards. We've got some convenient means of repeatedly infesting planets, uh, but I think that Guy might need some sort of a heavy hitter or something like that just to uh, try to block off the opposition here and so much of the threat posed by his opponent is being able to just conjure up uh, very big amounts of unexpected attack value whether it's through bond of brotherhood or uh, ambush platform or any number of other effects but it looks as though a toxic venom throat was what guy uh, settled on and we see commander starblaze destroy in a single fell swing the toxic venom throat planum activates and that's going to be the assault valkyrie moved to atrox prime so atrox prime is going to be an incredibly unpleasant target for the opposition to go to and note that that is going to be when the initiative is well i suppose the initiative will be in our astro military Terran player's hands when it comes down to Aatrox Prime being the first planet. We're going to see Elowith here very, very well defended by the Tyranid player, and uh, it's going to be going to be very tricky uh, for our Tyranid, I think, to establish himself with any kind of presence here at planet number two or planet number three uh, so that he can just try to, you know, uh, block his opponent's victory condition, potentially attain a victory condition himself. Guy only has the one green strong point icon, so he'd have to do something like take Planum and Iridial, which would be fine if he allows his, uh, you know, op opponent to take Aatrox Prime. But let's see how things break down. We see our HQ phase come and go. That's going to be uh, four resources and two cards. For both of our players, our new planet number five is going to be Farin, which affords Warlords the opportunity of routing a target non-Warlord, so subject Omega, without any units in his HQ, uh, I could definitely see him going to that planet. Iridial is our current planet number four, which does healing. We got a copy of Predation, which could spread infestation from planet number one to planet number two. 
We've got the Spore Burst, but it doesn't really have any great targets at the moment. We do happen to see a Volatile Pyrovore, which could be incredibly nasty. Uh, just put to absolutely any planet. Really, the only shame about this gene implantation is that apart from a gene stealer having to do the killing, there aren't really very many appealing units at the moment. There's, you know, the Talarn Raiders, there's a 04 Sanctioned Psyker. There's a 1-1 ranged unit. The uh, Assault Valkyrie is entirely ineligible, so I suppose we shall have to see. But then in regard to assessing Brian's hand, he came away from the HQ phase with a copy of Promotion to help lock down his command up against the Tyranid player, and he's also got another copy of the Vior Law Marksman. We see the Toxic Venom Throat put into play from Glaive Guy's hand. He's still got nine resources left after playing that, and that's going to be put out to planet number three, uh, nicely trumping the Earthcast Technician there. So let's see how the remainder of the deploy phase goes. Uh, Brian similarly has 10 resources in hand. He doesn't really have much to buy with those resources. He's got an Iron Guard Recruits if he wants to bump up his command icon value over the Toxic Venom Thrope. There's no more convenient Synapse unit uh, for Subject Omega to either tie or block or surpass his opponent in regard to command. Very interestingly, we see a copy of Hostile Environment Gear affixed to the Rattling Deadeye here at planet number two, so it's now a 4-4 ranged unit, uh, which is actually pretty nasty. I suppose it's good for our AM player's sake that he's not up against the Swarm Lord with an indescribable horror or something like that. Uh, I definitely will expect to see the Volatile Pyrovore interplay at some point, uh, presumably to something like Planum, where we could see like a victory at Elowith and Planum and Iridial be the game for our Tyranid player, uh, but we'll have to see how things go. The Spore Chimney is going to afford our uh, Tyranid player the opportunity of basically guaranteeing that whichever planet he once infested during a given round uh, stays that way outside of effects like Barzul's Keru Aramaeus to, say, resolve a battle at a planet, potentially clear it of infestation prior to uh, normal combat or something like that, but more or less it basically means that whatever planet you want is going to be uh, infested. The Viorla Marksman graces planet number four, and now it's going to be back to our Tyranid. The only planet with an infestation token right now is planet number one, so there's no point in ambushing the Gene Stealer Prowler to that planet. But what exactly is Guy up to? Guy puts out a copy of the Scything Hormigons to planet number two, and that's very interesting. Aatrox Prime is now uh, infested, and if we'd want to, uh, we could see the Volatile Pyrovore also go down to that planet, which means that it deals three points of damage to the attacker when it's destroyed by an attack, and if that's, say, the Assault Valkyrie doing that attacking, that three damage is going to completely ignore flying. We could also see the Gene Stealer Prowler ambushed into play at that that planet gene implantation may come into effect in regard to something like the Talarn Raiders here so I could definitely see Starblaze for that reason going to planet number two just to try to quash the Tyranid player before uh, anything potentially happens I could see Starblaze going to planet number three subject Omega I'm not sure if he would go to planet number one or planet number five it seems as though there's just all, or not, sorry, not planet number one, planet number two or planet number five. It just seems like there's such a tremendous uh, number of options for him. We see a promotion put out onto the Earthcast technician at planet number three, so that means that uh, three command icons trumps two, and now it's going to be back to Glaive Guy. Will we see the volatile Pyrovore played out to planet number two? Will he try to contest his opponent's presence at that planet or not? Certainly, if there is a battle at Aatrox Prime, that could be fantastic for the Tau player in dealing another point of damage to the Shrieking Harpy, presuming these bounce back to Subject Omega's HQ. Uh, it could potentially kill off the 2-2 Scything Hormigons. So there's certainly just a ton of different options. It's still currently Guy's opportunity to deploy, but let's see what he decides on. 
Guy does put out a copy of his Volatile Pyrovore, and it's going to be going to planet number two, so I'll be very curious to see if he ends up sending Subject Omega to that planet uh, just to steal the initiative, but of course the Rattling Deadeye is going to be able to attack for four during the ranged skirmish round. We do happen to see a two shield icon Spore Burst at that planet, uh, so that could shave a couple points of damage off of Subject Omega, but if he shows up at that planet, we could potentially see Bond of Brotherhood augment the Assault Valkyrie to be attacking for six. We could see for the Tau Va uh, to ready the um, the Rattling Deadeye, and that could attack again for four. So I'll be very curious to see here if Guy is going to be running himself into an ambush here. So a very tense, very interesting, very exciting game. But let's see how the remainder of this match plays out. It's going to be Brian's opportunity to play. Will we see the Iron Guard recruits put out to Farron or not? Uh, I certainly could see it going either way. Either he won't want to risk them being destroyed or you invest two resources in a card to gain two resources resources and it looks as though we do see the Iron Guard recruits, and interestingly, they're going to be put out to planet number two, so that just uh, lends more credence to the notion that he's almost assuredly going to be playing this Bond of Brotherhood, because then the Iron Guard recruits are going to be able to attack uh, for three, and this uh, basically persists until the end of the phase, so it's an incredibly powerful event. And I'll just be very interested to see if we see gene implantation go off. I imagine that Subject Omega is going to be showing up at that planet, but things could go very badly for him if, uh, let's say, Subject Omega shows up at planet number two. We could see the Rattling Deadeye attack for four, minus two would be three points of damage. And then if we see a four the Tau Va and it attacks again at Subject Omega, and that means it's another one shield icon card isn't going to be able to save him. Uh, Subject Omega X is going to be bloodied. Then we aren't going to be able to ambush the Gene Stealer Prowler. And uh, things are going to go all the way bad for our Tyranid. So is he running into a trap or not? Let's see where our warlords have chosen to go. Looks as though Guy has chosen... And let's reveal those dials. It's going to be planet number two for Commander Starblaze, so a little bit of overkill there, and it's going to be planet number five after all for Subject Omega. So it looks as though he very narrowly dodged a trap, but this is going to set him, well, set him into a very unfavorable situation where the initiative is going to be in the hands of Commander Starblaze. We could see the uh, Rattling Deadeye kill, like, the... I suppose the Volatile Pyrovore, potentially, or at least just wound it, then the Assault Valkyrie could kill whatever's left. Uh, let's see, it's two cards, two resources for Guy, and it's going to be three cards, two resources for Brian. So Guy did end up getting a copy of the Yumgarl Gene Stealer, but he does not have enough resources to play it. He could ambush it into play had he one additional resource at Aatrox Prime. It could have potentially attacked for a whopping six, but it's not going to be able to do that if he cannot afford to play it. Uh, Brian instead got another copy of Iron Guard Recruits and two copies of Gun Drones, which are great, but he does not have an ambush platform to surprisingly put them into play. Elowith is going to be captured entirely uncontested by our Tyranid player, and that's going to afford him the opportunity to search the top three cards of his deck, uh, perhaps for something like a Digestion Pool, but let's see what he comes up with. He gets a Dark Cunning, so this is very interesting. Another thing that benefits from infestation, you basically can attack with a unit, then you can play Dark Cunning for two, ready a target non-warlord unit, could have been a synapse unit, token, or army, uh, and then if the planet uh, is infested, then you basically gain one resource back, but the Shrieking Harpy and the Scything Hormigants are going to bounce into Subject Omega's HQ, and now let's see what exactly happens here for uh, Commander Starblaze. Is he going to be able to kill off all these Tyranids without taking too much damage in return? So let's see here. Commander Starblaze has initiative and he has a ranged skirmish attacker. We've got a two shield icon card to potentially preserve the life of the Volatile Pyrovore. We've got that uh, Bond of Brotherhood that could dramatically increase the attack power of all of these units, but that seems a little bit unnecessary. We could see for the Tau Va used just to have the Rattling Deadeye get off two attacks during the ranged skirmish round, uh, but that seems like a little bit of overkill. So let's see how exactly this goes. 
We're going to see the Rattling Deadeye take a shot at the Scything Hormigons. So there's absolutely nothing that uh, Guy can do to preserve that unit. So they're going to be outright destroyed. There we go by that Rattling Deadeye. And now the Volatile Pyrovore is not going to get an opportunity to attack quite yet. So is it going to be the Assault Valkyrie attacking or what? What are we going to see? Uh, whatever ends up killing the Pyrovore, it's going to take three points of damage in return, so an incredibly nasty effect. We could see the Assault Valkyrie attack it, but then we could see that two shield icon card used to preserve its life. We could see the Iron Guard recruits attack it, and we could see a Predation discarded as shields, and then we could also see Commander Starblaze perhaps finish it off, and then he takes three points of damage. Note that Iridial is on the board. Commander Starblaze isn't going to have any units in his HQ, but let's see how things break down. The Assault Valkyrie takes a swing at the Volatile Pyrovore. It ends up being destroyed, which is an interesting choice that our Tyranid player didn't want to uh, say, attack with it at least once, but he'll likely next turn use Spore Burst uh, to return it to play. So that's going to be the Assault Valkyrie nearly destroyed, but that is going to be Aatrox Prime being able to trigger and uh, fire into our Tyranid player's HQ. So let's see how exactly things break down here. Uh, note that at the end of combat, Aatrox Prime is going to lose its infestation token, but we could well see the Spore Chimney simply opt uh, to reinfest that planet. So. Let's see here. We do see a Gene Stealer Prowler ambushed into play, and this could potentially finish off the Assault Valkyrie, but let's see it. Either it'll kill the Assault Valkyrie, or we'll see a very, very powerful shield card uh, discarded. So the Gene Stealer takes a swing, and it's going to be taking a shot at what? I can only imagine it's going to be the Valkyrie, but let's see an arrow. There we go. We do finally see the arrow. It's indeed attacking the Assault Valkyrie. Are we going to see... Okay, so uh, the Assault Valkyrie is destroyed. Looks like we wanted to spare the For the Talva and a Bond of Brotherhood for when it's really going to come down to the line or come down to the wire. So Glaive Guy got that free kill, and now it's going to be the IG player's turn to uh, conveniently kill uh, this Gene Stealer Prowler. Starblaze looks like he's probably going to be able to do it by himself, uh, so he takes a swing, and uh, that Gene Stealer Prowler there is outright destroyed, and that finally is going to be Aatrox Prime. Uh, triggered. So let's see if the Shrieking Harpy takes damage. Let's see if the Scything Hormigons take damage. What's going to be very interesting here is Brian has got one icon of every color. Uh, if he were to win at Planum and if he were to win at Iridial, that would be the game for him. Uh, Subject Omega is going to be able to route a unit. I can only imagine it's going to be that Rattling Deadeye. So there we go. That's going to be returned to the HQ of Starblaze, only to show up during the following round exhausted, as opposed to being a 4-4 ranged keyword attacker. The initiative token is going to be... Uh, at Planum, the initiative will be in the possession of Subject Omega, so I could definitely see him going there the following round just to set up his Shrieking Harpy, but if Aatrox Prime is won by Starblaze, Starblaze could blast Planum. So things are looking pretty difficult for our Tyranid player. Uh, I'll be very interested to see where Spore Chimney infests. So let's see, Infestation Marker at Planet 1 is gone. And uh, Synaptic, well, Spore Chimney is going to be able to uh, basically generate a token wherever. So I'll just say, don't forget about your support. So just to make sure everything is completely fair here. So... Uh, in any case, we're going to be at the bottom of our deploy phase. In any case, after a bit of a misunderstanding there on my part, we're at the beginning of our deploy phase. Aatrox Prime lost its infestation token at the end of combat, uh, but Spore Chimney actually does not need to exhaust in order to trigger its ability. Uh, so the infestation marker was cleared, and then it was immediately replaced as soon as we saw the HQ phase. 
Uh, so I'm sure next round we'll probably see uh, Spore Chimney infest Planum, but for the time being, Aatrox Prime is the infested planet. So that's going to be four resources and two cards for each of our players. We see a Virulent Spore Sax. Uh, we, well, I suppose... Guy must have either rearranged his cards or he drew a copy of promotion that he's put out onto his toxic venom throw here. We see an Iron Guard recruits played out by Commander Starblaze to planet number two, and we see a deception in Starblaze's hand. So we see that spore burst finally played, and that's going to be the Volatile Pyrovore put into play at our new planet number one. So Aatrox Prime, it's entirely possible that our Tyranid player could uh, win at that planet. Like, let's say that uh, if Subject Omega goes to that planet, he'll be showing up with the Shrieking Harpy at a planet with an infestation token. Very smartly, we see a copy of Gun Drones fixed to the Sanctioned Psyker sitting at that planet, and uh, we could even see for the Tau Va to ready the Sanctioned Psyker after it does an area effect volley of two, and if we see a second copy of Gun Drones on that unit, it could potentially do area effect four, and uh, uh, area effect is not an attack, so if it kills the Volatile Pyrovore, that is not going to trigger that uh, dangerous interrupt there. Um, but if Commander Starblaze does not go to planet number one, then our Tyranid player could steal initiative. What's really fantastic, too, is that Area Effect 4 could potentially kill off the Shrieking Harpy as well, uh, because flying only cuts attack damage in half, as opposed to damage through card effects. We do see that copy of Deception, which could potentially bounce away the Volatile Pyrovore, so long as uh, Brian can manage to deploy stall his opponent a little bit further. We've got a copy of the Yimgarl Gene Stealer, which could be ambushed out to Aatrox Prime to attack for six if there's a Warlord at that planet, if Subject Omega X remains unbloodied. We've got this Ripper Swarm that could match at uh, planet number three or planet number four. So... I will be very curious to see how things break down. I think at this point they could easily go either direction, but I still think that Brian's got a bit of an advantage here in regard to uh, just how versatile his units can be. Uh, note that Guy has one green, one blue icon, and uh, Brian has one icon of every color. So it's going to be up to uh, Guy to decide what he wants to deploy next, but he's going to have to choose all of his actions very carefully. So we see Guy pass, and now it's going to be Brian's opportunity to do something like a deception and then bounce that Pyrovore away from the planet, and then once that happens, it's going to make it far, far easier for him to potentially win that battle, or he can be a little bit risky and affix a second copy of Gun Drones uh, to his Sanction Psyker and then instead use that copy of Deception uh, for its shield value. So we could see potentially, like, let's say we see area effect four, uh, maybe if a uh, guy draws some shield cards, he can spare the life of his Pyrovore or the Shrieking Harpy. Uh, if, if that happens, if the Sanctioned Psyker gets attacked or whatever the case may be, if the Tyranid does a different kind of attack, we could just as easily see a for the Tau Va ready the area effect for Sanctioned Psyker, and then it could just absolutely obliterate all the Tyranid presence of that planet, uh, subject Omega X included. So let's see, what exactly does Brian do? I think he could play it safe and bounce the Volatile Pyrovore, or he could be a little bit risky and do the area effect four thing and either deter his opponent from going to that planet or just otherwise lure his opponent into a death trap uh, because whether he does it now or whether he does it later that for the Tau Va with an unexpected area effect four uh, could easily be a game deciding maneuver but let's see what Brian opts to do Brian has played a copy of gun drones onto his rattling dead eyes so that's going to be very interesting it's going to show up exhausted remember but for the Tauva means that it could have the opportunity to attack uh during ranged for area effect two i'm not exactly convinced that was the ideal play 
putting it uh, on a unit that is already so laden with attachments, like if it's already attacking for four during ranged, uh, it seems as though it might be a better choice to spread the love and give that area effect to some other unit. Uh, I don't know, maybe like the Viorla Marksman, if you could move it further up the line, if you're planning to win it, plan them. But in any case, the Volatile Pyrovore does get bounced back to Glaive Guy's hand. And uh, now I'll just be very curious to see where exactly our Tyranid player opts to go. Both players are going to pick where to send their Warlords. I can't imagine that Commander Starblaze is going to be going to Planum. I suppose he could. Uh, but then if that... And I guess he is. But if that were the case... I just think he'd have been better served possibly affixing that gun drones to the Vior Law Marksman. So it's going to be planet number two for uh, Subject Omega, and this is going to be very interesting here. So we've got the Earthcast Technician, we've got Iron Guard Recruits, we've got Commander Starblaze, and with or without... Well, God, we could see For the Tauva and Bond of Brotherhood with the initiative token in our Tau player's hand potentially result in a bloodying of Subject Omega, but let's see how things go down. Looks like Guy thinks that that's going to cost him the game, but let's see how it goes. It's going to be four cards and four resources for Brian, and I believe that is zero income whatsoever for Glaive Guy. Note that this planet is not infested, and this is going to be very, very painful for our Tyranid, but planet number one, and check this out, I forgot that planet number one is Aatrox Prime, so that's going to be planet number two blasted with that. So there's, well, I guess we could see a copy of the Yumgarl Gene Stealer touch down on that planet and potentially attack. Uh, for four, note that the initiative token is in the hands of our Astra Militarum, allied uh, Commander Starblaze player. So let's see if the Gene Stealer touches down, tries to kill off some of these Gyvesa, uh, and then if, if that's potentially the case, let's see if Bond of Brotherhood is going to result in damage being dealt, uh, well, potentially fatal damage being dealt to the Gene Stealer. So Gimgarl Gene Stealer does go to Aatrox Prime, and now let's see what, if anything, our Tau player can do to try to salvage this one. He's got quite a few shield icons in hand. Uh, he's got the Searing Burst Cannon. He's, you know, got a two shield icon card. He's got that Bond of Brotherhood to boost both of these up so that the Iron Guard recruits are attacking for three. The Talon Raiders are attacking for two. He definitely could do it, but will he do it? We do see Bond of Brotherhood, so that's going to be both of these units getting plus two attack. And uh, let's see how this breaks down. I can only imagine that he's going to be very free with shield cards. Note that we've got a copy of Dark Cunning, but no resources to play it. So that's going to be three one shield icon cards, not even enough to play a gene implantation, which could have potentially swung this battle. Uh, but let's see how things break down. I just think this is definitely going to be a bit of a tragedy here for our Tyranid. So it's going to be Brian's opportunity to attack. I can only imagine we'll see the Iron Guard recruits take a swing for three at the Yumgarl Gene Stealer. So let's see. I don't really understand the logic here. The Talarn Raiders are going to be the ones to attack first. That's going to be an attack value of two. Uh, the Yumgarl, is it going to take two or is it only going to take uh, one? I guess let's see if we see any shield cards or not. We do see a predation used as shields. So the Yumgarl Gene Stealers only sitting at one point of damage with three HP remaining. It's of course going to take a swing at the Iron Guard Recruits for four, but I would imagine that our Tyranid is not, well, is kind of counting on uh, the signature attachment not sitting in his opponent's hand. So there we do see the Burst Cannon discarded. That means the Iron Guard Recruits are only going to take one single point of damage and now the recruits are going to be able to attack in return for three. Either the Yumgarl Gene Stealer is going to be killed, or he'll use a one shield icon card to save its life and retreat at the end of the round, or he'll foolishly stay and uh, just allow the initiative token possessing AM player uh, to kill it. So are we going to see either of these cards discarded as shields just to let it retreat or not? It's got an incoming attack value of three. Guys, got to be deciding, is it worth it? 
and then as soon as the battle is lost for our Tyranid player, Aatrox Prime is going to trigger. That's going to be a very wounded Harpy, potentially killed off by Area Effect 2, and things are just looking all the way bad for our Tyranid player. But will we see a shield card or not? We do end up seeing that copy of Dark Cunning discarded as shields. The Yimgarl Gene Stealer is only going to have a single hit point remaining. It's going to be afforded the opportunity to retreat at the end of the combat round, but that's going to be Aatrox Prime 1 for our AM player. That's going to be another red and blue material icon for him. And uh, then that means that everything is going to come down to our next round's battle at uh, Planum here. So let's see what exactly occurs. So is Glaive Guy going to retreat or not? Okay, so very wisely he decides to retreat. Uh, there's absolutely no reason for him to throw away that, that unit's life. And now Aatrox Prime is really going to soften up all of these targets here at Planum. Uh, or it could potentially shoot the Gene Stealer, but it seems like that would be a tremendous mistake. Uh, so Aatrox Prime, I can only imagine, is going to attack Planum. Uh, both of our players are kind of cracking a couple of jokes. Looks as though Aatrox Prime is going to eventually fire at Planum. We're just maybe waiting on an arrow or something. There we go. So planet number one is finally captured, and that's going to be Aatrox Prime dealing damage uh, to Planum as soon as Guy gets around to actually assigning that damage. Uh, so let's see. All right, so there we see, after a little bit of a reminder, we finally see Aatrox Prime trigger. And uh, that's going to be one point of damage dealt out to each and every Tyranid on that planet. So note that the initiative token is in the possession of our Tau player. Uh, we've got that copy of For the Tau Va, which could really punish our Tyranid here. And speaking of punishing our Tyranid, we see an area effect two. So that's potentially going to kill off the Shrieking Harpy if we don't see Gene Implantation discarded as shields. That's going to be the Toxic Venomthrope destroyed, and that's going to be Subject Omega taking two points of damage. So either he'll use his action to immediately retreat, or otherwise he'll be potentially bloodied by that uh, copy of For the Tau Va. So the Shrieking Harpy is killed. The Toxic Venomthrope is killed, and now that's going to be Subject Omega. Is he going to retreat or not? At this point in the game, I cannot think of anything our Tyranid player could potentially do to try to salvage this match. He does retreat. We could see during the HQ phase, Planum, the infested, but Guy's not going to draw into enough resources to put a Shrieking Harpy into play, even though he'll have initiative, even though the planet will be infested. At this point, I just don't think there's enough that he can do, especially considering that this Rattling Deadeye is going to be sitting there at our soon-to-be planet number one with, uh, you know, four attack during the ranged round with area effect two. During the ranged round, it looks as though it's going to be absolutely impossible for our Tyranid player to scrabble, uh, you know, up out of the hole that he's finding himself in. But Planum does exhaust. Very strangely, we actually see the uh, Planum move the Rattling Deadeye to Iridial, and uh, looks as though Brian indicates that he should have indeed kept his Rattling Deadeye at the planet. Uh, I can't imagine that Either of our players wouldn't allow a take back in these proxy games. Uh, normally they run a little bit fast and loose with the rules, uh, but either way, uh, tremendous misplay or not, uh, I don't think our Tyranid player is going to be able to come back from this. He did come across a copy of Volatile Pyrovore at some point. Uh, he's going to be able to put that into play at this planet number one. But I don't really think that that's going to be enough. We've got the Virulent Spore Sacks, which could see play at that planet, but he's not going to be able to put both of them into play. So he could do the Noxious Flesh Borer on the Volatile Pyrovore. He could make it a 
well, basically a 4-4 unit. Uh, the well, spore chimney does mean that Planum is infested. Uh, and in regard to what Brian came across, we see an Earthcast Technician, which will be able to tutor the top six cards of his deck. Hopefully he's going to come into, uh, uh, I suppose, another copy of Gun Drones for him. But it looks as though at this point, Glaive Guy has actually called out GG, so good game. Looks as though the victor in this match is going to be Brian. Very easily, we could have seen Subject Omega sent to planet number one. The Yumgarl Gene Stealer would have shown up exhausted. The Sanction Psyker could have dealt its area effect to Volley. So whether that Sanction Psyker, let's see, the Volatile Pyrovore would have attacked it for four. Uh, minus two would have been two points of damage. It still could have done its area effect thing. Even without the enormous misplay that was shifting the Rattling Deadeye to planet number two, I definitely think that our uh, Gaivesa playing player could have, uh, you know, pulled it out. We could have seen that for the Tauva been a double area effect to volley, but I suppose congratulations once again to Brian for taking this match home. Be sure to leave a comment letting me know what you think of Subject Omega X 62113, our upcoming Gene Stealer Warlord. Does he need more infestation support? Does he need more Gene Stealer variety? I'm definitely curious to see what your thoughts are uh, regarding our upcoming Gene Stealer, and of course, let me know what uh, you think of Commander Starblaze. So, so I suppose with that said, I'll just end this video by saying, if you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already, or if you are already subscribed, as ever, you're always encouraged to share this content, as the more views, the more likes these videos receive, the more subscriptions my channel incurs, all of that means more players are going to stumble upon these videos, they'll be exposed to Conquest, they might give the game a try, like what they experience, join our community, and of course, all together we continue to send the message to Fantasy Flight Games to continue to support this fantastic product. If at any point you'd like to get in touch with me, I'd encourage you to do so through Twitter or on Facebook, and of course, if you ever feel so inclined to help support the Hive Tyrant, I'd be absolutely honored were you to donate to my Patreon. But I'll just end things by saying once again, thank you so much for watching, and as as always, be sure to check back in again soon for ever more Conquest LCG content to come.